All right, guys, I'm not going to give you this whole entire 30 minute talk. That's just not fair uh, to David Chong. He spent a lot of time getting prepped for this and uh, it's eight bucks, eight bucks to get in there and see the whole talk. So this isn't the full thing. I did what I could to give you the most important information, but there's a lot of other stuff that he covered that you really should have checked out uh, or go to one of his presentations. So this should get you guys running though. Uh, for perch fishing, it's coming up. I just heard that we have good ice. It's what, I think it's like uh, Thursday. So I might have a little lateness getting this thing up, but we have good ice now. So this will get you guys going for perch fishing. Just watch, go. Location, location, location. This is not just perch fishing. It's every type of fishing. It's all about finding the fish. If you can find the fish, Generally, they're not that difficult to catch, but finding them is the key. Okay, so it's, it's almost a no-brainer, you know, especially as a bass fisherman, when I see the number of guys who spend $30 on one jerk bait, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's crazy. But, uh, like I said, it's got, uh, on the sonar charts, one-foot contours, okay? Uh, when I went down to, um, before I went down to Hartwell, Spent a lot of time looking at my iPad, looking at my Navionics app, looking on Lake Hartwell, trying to figure out where we're going to start fishing and where we're going to scout for fish. Because you get all the contours, you see the breaks, you can find where the ditches are and everything. Um, so a lot of information on it. Um, my wife kept wondering why I was in the washroom so long, but I was just studying my maps in there. So, <laughs> so there's a there's a, a screenshot of. Uh, an area on Lake Simcoe and I've got my uh, multicolored different levels so you can select whatever depths you want and color it any way you want so it really makes everything pop on the map and you can see where the the drop-offs are you can you can see where the shoals are you can see where there's fingers you can see where there's troughs works now look at that oh cool see you can look I can just at a glance here I can see there's a finger coming out here here's kind of a saddle between two shallower areas, right there. There's a deeper finger right there, just in the contour lines you can see, and then you can see the little tip out there. And there's a there's a longer shoal right there. And there's so much you can see in it, so you know it makes it real easy. Here's another area here. Like I said, it, it, the contours they mark are often one foot contours. And something that I don't even want to ice fish with. If I don't have my electronics with me, I don't even want to go, okay? I need to see what's beneath the ice. I need to see where the fish are, if there's fish there. That's probably the biggest thing for me, you know? And your electronics, and you can, you know, you don't need an overly expensive unit. If you want to spend money, you can get a panoptics unit. Of course, if you got money burning a hole in your pocket, go, go ahead and do it. It's great, lots of things it can, it can do for you. But any kind of electronic, a regular flasher and everything, I just have to have something that I know that I can mark fish down there and I know there's fish there. Because if you're sitting there and you've got no electronics, then you're there and you're not catching fish. Well, are you not catching fish because they're not there? Or are you using the wrong thing? Or are you using it too fast? How do you know to change something if you don't know there's really fish there? So here's what's changed in Lake Simcoe. Remember I told you about, you know, where the fish are and everything, where the location is? That little critter right there, it's called a round goby, invasive species. Remember I said, one of the things you look for is forage for the perch. As long as there's forage around, they'll be around. It doesn't matter if there's weeds or not. And I've got loads of pictures, my thing from ice fishing, and that's what happens when I catch them. They cough up, guess what? Gobies. So let's get into the jack spoon phenomenon. And the jack spoon I use is a slab grabber. Who here has used the slab grabber? The rest of you not fish with perch out here? Really? Okay. This is, <laughs> yeah, okay, Greg. <laughs> um, as far as I'm concerned, the number one ice fishing lure for perch. They catch them in open water too. I was talking to a gentleman who had to go buy all new stuff because he put his boat away and he left all his ice fishing stuff in his boat because he also uses these during the uh, 
during the open water season. It works for them as well. But uh, a, a slab grabber is a type of jack spoon. A jack spoon is evolved uh, from very simple um, Russian ice fishing jigs that they had many years ago. Uh, probably most of the manufacturers stuff are around Michigan and stuff. Uh, that's where slab grabbers Usually come there's from. at least three or four boxes with different color beads, different sizes, you know. And we'll talk about why you need a selection. So there's your different shapes. We got a diamond, we got a kite, we got a round top, and we got a fan shaped one. And then there's the one and a quarter, one and a half, two inch, three inch. And then we have the drain pipe, which is a heavier material and it's gold on one side, silver on the other side. And there's the dimple models, which are only available both the drain pipe and the dimple models are only available in, uh, in uh, the diamond and fan shape. So lots and lots of different choices. Why do you need so many different choices? Because obviously everybody has their own favorite color. So that's why you need so many. Because you know, um, I've been out there when there's been a lot of people around and everybody's catching them and literally I'd say 60 to 70% of the people are using slab grabbers. And the funny thing is, you know, everybody's using a different color and they're all catching fish. So I don't know if, if, if you know, but confidence in any type of fishing is huge. If you believe that you're going to catch fish with what you're using, chances are actually better that you're going to catch fish with it. You know, because you pay more attention to it, you work it a little bit better, you're more deliberate about it. Whereas when you don't have confidence in something, you're there, you're going, nah, 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 nah. and then, oh, look, there's a seagull up there, and then all of a sudden the fish hits and you miss it, right? Because you're not paying attention. So when you have confidence in something, you will definitely do better with it. So for me, as far as I'm concerned, red, orange, a couple of chartreuse, that's, that's really, for the most part, what I, what I use. The odd time I will use a glow in lower light conditions, but I know people who swear by green, I know people who you know, swear by pink, white, black, black. What's different about them? So every size, sorry, every, obviously every size, but every shape and different material can affect the fall rate. Here is your listings of the widest and furthest, it'll swing away and wobble away. Fan is the furthest. Round is the second, kite third, diamond fourth, and then thin fin doesn't, doesn't move very far away from your hole at all. And when you're looking at fall, just straight fall rates, the drain pipe and the diamond shape falls the fastest. It's a thicker metal, so it's actually heavier for its size. Then the fan is next, and then through the other shapes is diamond, kite, round, and thin fin. And the fan shape is the slowest fall of all the different sizes. So what one do you use? It depends on the mood of the fish, okay? If the fish are aggressively feeding, do you know what I want? I want the one that's gonna get it back down there to, to them as fast as possible. So I'm gonna be diamond drain pipe all the way, okay? The thing about schooling fish, if they're feeding, you wanna keep them interested. You don't wanna be wasting time, you know, undoing things and monkeying around and changing this, because Chances are, you, you, everybody here knows that fish swim, right? They might just swim away, or they might shut off. But when they're aggressively feeding, you want to keep them feeding. You want to keep them going. You want to keep them interested. So you want to get your lure down there to them as fast as possible. Now, when they're there, and they're just not in an aggressive mood and stuff like that, like I said, sometimes you have to slow things down. You may have to downsize a little bit smaller. And like I said, um, sometimes you'll be catching fish, catching fish, catching fish. You're still marking them and they stop biting. Sometimes it's as simple as changing to a different color bead and it'll fire them up again. Just something different. Okay, if they're still there, they're still going to eat, but you, you might have to change something. Yeah. If you're using a slab grabber, do not tie direct to the lure. I tell you, the retailers would love you, but you will not be very happy because that metal edge will cut your line and you will lose a bunch of slime grabbers.
So make sure make sure you use some form of of snap swivel. I I use the um, the uh, fast hatch ones from uh, from Stringies. Okay, and that keeps it thing. And like I said, change the color bead, change the shape, change the size, change something. And again, that's where it comes back to having electronics. So I know the fish haven't left. I can still see them on this on my screen. So I have to change something, give them something different to get them biting again. And as you can see by this screen here, some days it is the bead color because that's what they hit. I would say 90% of the time. I rarely ever see them have it from this end in. And almost every time, you know, you're nodding your head because that's what you've seen too, right? Yeah, they're, they're, they hit that bead. That bead's the one that kind of zones them in on the, on the lure. The, the flash may attract them in, but that bead is what they, they eventually eat. Again, if it slows down, never hurts to add some scent to your lure. Okay. And the liquid mayhem is a gel scent, so it's got really strong adhesive properties, and it's great for metal. You can see this perch here. See that? See that red there? And you can see you can see the uh, the, the liquid mayhem on there. But I, I know many people ice fishing don't necessarily think about scenting their bait. They may do it all summer, and then it comes on the ice. They don't they don't even think about it. You know. And and liquid ones on things like metal surfaces, they don't just don't stay on very long. So how many people use ultralight or light rods when they're perch fishing here? Okay. I'll tell you what, you see these rods over here? They call them slab grabber rods. It basically what it is is an it's an it's an aluminum arrow shaft. And what they've done is they bent the end, put it a guide there. They put a couple holders here and you wrap line around it. That is what Darren McGathy, who's the originator of the slab grabber, that's all he used. He won the Simcoe Ice Fishing uh, Tournament Canadian Tire event here, what is it, two years ago, three years ago. Unfortunately, he hasn't had a chance to come back up, but if he comes back up this year, if I had to bet money on somebody winning it, I'd probably bet money on him. The funniest thing about him is he uses this, they use 12 pound mono, they don't use light line. That's an aluminum arrow shaft. There is no bend to that, okay? It makes you think about your light action, your ultra light stuff. Do you really need it? Me personally, I use a medium or a medium heavy rod. I still like a rod and reel. <laughs> I, I have an arrow rod, I know how to use it. I have used it and I had some good days on it. I still just like a rod and reel. I like to reel, reel them in. Anyways, if, you, if you're ever out there and you see some guys fishing and they're doing this and, you know, they're, they're not having some kind of, you know, spasm or something like that. They're actually, because when you use those rods, you do a, a thing which we just call windmilling. And you hold the rod in one hand and you actually use your thumb. And how you get your line up, that's why the hook on the end is. So you set the hook, you hook the line with this, you hook this, you hook with this, and basically you're doing this. He can get that fish up faster than you can reel one in. If you, if you see guys out there, chances are they're from Michigan. Doesn't make them bad people. They just do things a little differently. In fact, sometimes they're using not just 12 pound mono, they're using 12 pound yellow mono. Okay, it kinda, you kind of throw the book out, out the window with that one. But they pinch the barb on the thing and literally it'll be boom, 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 it's up. They touch it to the ice, the spoon comes out and boom, 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 it's right back down to the fish. They can get it back down so fast, it's incredible. It, it, it's something to watch. So if you're out there and you see them, Go ahead, they're nice people. They'll, they'll explain what they're doing. They'll show you what they're doing. But, but <laughs> me, me personally, like I said, you know, 20, you know, 25 inch plus, you know, up to about 28 inches, a little stiffer rod. Because with, with the spoons, you, if it's too soft, when you're doing this, there's such a lag behind everything. So a little stiffer rod allows you to make, put more action to that spoon, okay? But, not, but the thing is, you don't want to do too much action. A lot of the action is very subtle. Like literally down there, 
you know, it's more sh shaking it. I may lift it and shake it, watching the sonar, see if they're interested, see if they follow it. And by the way, I'm not getting into fancy into into my donkey rig, but that's a that's a good presentation because sometimes if they don't want the spoon, they might like that little shrimp that's up top there. But anyways, if you're using, you, if you have been using slab grabbers and you're not having success with it, the only thing I can tell you is slow down. Chances are you're fishing it too fast. You know? Because when you do this, it doesn't come out of the water, but you, you get the you get the idea. Like what in nature does that? You know? Okay? Shake it, shake it, lift it, hold it. Drop it down, lift it off the bottom, hold it. Sometimes you might want to let it kick in the uh, kick in the bottom if you're on sand. Like if you can get it to kick up a little sand and stuff like that, it gets some interest, it gets them attracted and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, no, uh, I, I, I honestly wouldn't worry, after seeing these guys and fishing with these guys, I would never worry about light gear. I mean, I, I still go fairly, I mean, I go, I go with like a six pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. But six pound fluorocarbon, it's strong. It's strong. And a lot of times that's because I'm running uh, you know, like I said, the donkey rake, and if you got two pound and a half perch on there, that's that's a fair bit of weight in there. So you want to get uh, you want to get some uh, good thing on. Straight fluorocarbon does not work well on spinning reels, especially in cold weather because of their stiffness. You'll have all kinds of problems. You don't want to do that. If you do want to do it, get yourself one of these inlines. There's lots of quality ones out there. HT. This is an HT one. It's got uh, it's a multi multiplier, so it's like a three three to one ratio. But uh, an ice fishing for me really is all about the socialization, you know, hanging out with your friends, you know, bringing the kids out, uh, you know. So when you when you go ice fishing, take a kid out with you, you know, take your friends up with you. It's a lot more fun. It's a lot more enjoyable than just sitting around a hole by yourself. You know. Some of the you know manufacturers I talked about and some of the stuff I use. Anyways, uh, if you, Somebody's coming up and actually Gord, Gord Pizer is coming up in five minutes because they're in for a treat there. Anyway, so we're not going to take any questions, but I'm going to be right over there at the HT booth. Feel free to come over. There you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit like. Hit subscribe. I'll give you a few more videos, maybe not talks. They'll be all me. It's ice fishing time. Let's go.